Welcome to another edition of All About the Grace. I'm Bridget Ayer and I'm here with my guest Leighton Drake. And Leighton is, you have many talents. You are the Director of Faith Formation at Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Carmel, Indiana. And you're a Catholic artist and evangelist too. So we're going to do two segments. We'll talk about um, your ministry and your conversion. Because I think one of the things I really want to do on this channel is to talk about conversion because I think that's kind of what moves the dial. Um, now you've been involved in youth ministry for a long time. Yeah, so. probably probably over 20 years. Okay, so one thing that Leighton and I both share, I, I did youth ministry but only for a couple years, but um, it's really nice to, when, when we met, I just, I immediately liked you because you were like on fire and, you know, I just, I really love seeing people that share like the love of the Lord mm -hmm. and that are Catholic because you know we there's a lot that we have in common you know if you're Catholic and you're in love with the Lord which those two things aren't always it's not always that way sure, sure. you know and so what I'm always curious what did it for you I mean were you did you grow up in a really devout as a devout Catholic no. what okay so I want you to talk about your background and how you I guess got on fire for God Okay. Um, well, I was raised in a home where um, we didn't go to church. I think we went to church maybe three or four times in my entire childhood. Okay. And we went. And my dad, my dad always taught that church was for weak people. You know, that was that's what he believed, and that was just how he was kind of how he grew up. Mm -hmm. If you um, pass on kind yeah. of what you know, and now yeah. as a parent, I think about that myself, like. You just do things the way maybe they were done. Yeah, and I think that, I think my dad, he had a, you know, without getting into a lot of detail, but my dad's past and everything, he's, he's deceased now, but my dad, um, he, I think he had a chip on his shoulder. He had a lot of pain. His dad died when he was 12, mm. and it was a very traumatic event. Yeah. Um, he wouldn't talk about it. Very rarely would he talk about it, and when he did, there was a lot of anger there. And, and I think when you have a traumatic event like that, mm -hmm. and it could be when you're young or when you're older, Sometimes, and I don't know if this was your dad's case, but you're like, God, well, why? And, yeah. And, you can, and, that, and that, I don't know if that was the case, but... I think so. I think because his father was actually, he was in the Presbyterian Church, and okay. I believe he was a deacon, in that, which is different than what we, uh, ordained deacons that we have, but he was very active in his church. And so I've wondered, I mean, I don't know. I've wondered if that had something to do with it, his father being very active in the church and then his father dying on him. His, his father was uh, 41. My grandfather was 41. Wow, so I never that's really met him, young. obviously. And yeah, it was really, and my father. <laughs> that seems really young, you know, yeah, as, 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 you, as you get older, you start thinking, you start yeah, thinking, I passed that up a while ago. <laughs> and, but it was very traumatic for him. And, and he would say things. He'd say, you know, if there's a God, why would he? do that to me. Mm -hmm. So I think there was a lot of anger. My mother was a, a, a beautiful woman of faith, but she was kind of raised in eclectic belief and, you know, Christian belief. She was raised disciples of Christ. And so there was, you know, it wasn't necessarily regular church going that I know of. Okay. Um, and, but when we were growing up, uh, it was, it was really, uh, my dad just was so against organized religion and really kind of any religious. He he became his his philosophy was uh, he'd say the key is me. I'm I'm a you know I have to depend on me. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was hard for my mom to practice any kind of faith without feeling you know embarrassed or or teased for it. Mm -hmm. And so being a young man, I grew up. My father was my hero. And my father was very for a time he was very successful. He started a business and was very and I looked at him. He was bigger than life. And to me, the idea of, of religion or any kind of spiritual belief, just to me, it would be to say I was weak, and then my dad would see that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do, and that so, and that that's a problem. Yeah. So, how did you? I mean, you didn't have any. How did I kind family? of stumble into well, that? Yeah. How yeah. did you become so, a Catholic? So what happened was, so growing up, I didn't know what a Catholic okay, was. Okay, where'd you grow up? I grew up I, the first part in Oklahoma City. Okay. Up till I was about nine. All right. Which is part of the Bible Belt, I guess. So mm -hmm. it's like, and then we moved to Phoenix, Arizona, when I was about to turn nine. And um, there's a pretty strong Catholic community there, but we yeah. didn't. I had a cousin that converted to Catholicism, but other than that, we really had no Catholics that I knew of in our family. Okay. And I love hearing stories like this because I love to hear how people got to where they're at. Yeah. You really. Well, and it's it, you look at it and you think, what are the odds? And that's where you see providence. Uh, really powerfully. 
And so, but as a young man, I was always hungry for, um, you know, truth. You know, now I would never have said this mm -hmm. then, but truth, goodness, and beauty. I mean, I was, that's what I was seeking for. I was really, as I'm an illustrator, and so as, as an artist, really I was drawn to beauty, beauty in films, music. I always was moved by those things so much. And I always had a longing. I remember I just told uh, some junior high kids this the other day that my friend and I, we'd, he'd uh, stay over and we'd sleep outside. My mom would let us sleep out by the pool. And this is when I was like 12, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And we'd just stare at the stars and I'd say, Brad, do you think there's a God? <laughs> and Brad wasn't very talkative. Right? He'd be like, I don't know. And I'd say, Brad, do you think there's life out there in outer space? I don't know. <laughs> but I was always really hungry. I, I was seeking truth. Well, I even think as we all man. are at some point. We don't maybe know that's what we're seeking for. You know, I'm restless. Yeah. We're restless until yeah. we rest in God. Isn't oh that my gosh, Saint totally. Augustine's, uh, yeah. Is it St. Augustine? It's St. Augustine. And uh, we, you made us for yourself, oh God, and we're restless until we rest in you. And there's a great video by uh, Christophonic, the uh, the Catholic evangelist. Yeah, in fact, and he's he coming to uh, he's coming into yeah, Carmel in that's right. a little soon, November. That's right. November. Well, he does this great video. It's real short, but he talks about happiness. And he says, you know, you want to be a rock star. I'm paraphrasing. You want to be a rock star, um, maybe because it make you think it's going to make you happy, or you know, so all those things that we long for. So for me. It was being a successful entrepreneur because that's what my father was, mm -hmm. and for me, it was having a lot of stuff, and you know, it was being the kind of guy that walks into the room and people, oh, he's he's successful and all that. Mm -hmm. But what I found as I got older, that just didn't satisfy me, and and I felt like even the older part, as in what, like twenty? In, in my t late teens, okay. I was, and and I got into the party scene in my late teens again, trying to fill something. Sure. I was desperately empty inside, and I didn't understand why, but I had no. I had no no guidance on where to find that that piece of soul that you know Bishop Sheen would talk about Archbishop Sheen that and I think that's what I was longing for but again I didn't know how to articulate it and then when I was in my mid 20s I had the occasion I was a very I was a young married father but just that emptiness inside I you know my job didn't satisfy my my life just in general didn't satisfy me and so this woman invited me to go down to a, a Franciscan mission to the poor in Guaymas, Sonora, Mexico. Okay. Um, so... H how'd you know this person? So I knew her because she worked in a... Um, she, she... You worked together? No, 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 okay. no. She was an older lady. Okay. And she was a counselor. And so I had met her through someone else. I'd gotten okay. her number from someone else. And I went to talk to her because I was just so empty and, mm -hmm. and feeling like there had to be more. And so she belonged to this group of Catholics that they would go down and take food and everything and, and work down there. They were building, you know, the churches down there and everything. It was really neat. Mm -hmm. And I think what she, I think she recognized in me that she was very interested in my art. And I think she recognized in me this potential and she saw that I was seeking. And so she said, you want to come down? We're going to take a bunch of food down. Um, and, you know, we lived in Phoenix. And surprisingly I said sure because I, I you know the whole religious thing was really put off to me but I went down and I was there for a week and it was my first exposure really to Catholicism and I remember I didn't understand the liturgy or anything but what I saw down there was I saw the priests the, the sisters the lay uh, Franciscans they just literally gave up everything to serve the, the people down there and the other thing that struck and to me that was an encounter with love it was like now, I'd seen love and my family had a lot of love, but mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of dysfunction too, but I mean, but I think, you know, we all do. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> no, so I was, yeah, I mean, we were pretty typical in that. And, but there was a lot of love there, even with my dad's attitude about religion, there was a lot of love in our family, a lot of brokenness, mm -hmm. but a lot of love. And, but I recognized it in a different way. It was like, it kind of took me off guard. And I remember just thinking, who does that for other people they don't even know? Who gives yeah. up? The priest slept in a, on a cot in a little storeroom. And he's like 50 years old. And I'm like, who does that? Yeah. It was so conscious. Why, why would anyone do that? Yeah. And to me, said, it was like everything against success and, and happiness. And they're, and they're probably happy, too. Yeah. And that was, <laughs> that was the second component of it. There was a joy in them that I longed for and I recognized it and I ached for it and even in the children that because I didn't speak any Spanish and but I would draw these drawings and the kids loved it they came to me and they they just loved watching me draw and they do their little caricatures and drawings but they had a joy about them and mm -hmm. I couldn't compute that as a upper middle class and 
uh, you know, it's your ideology who, of what it didn't make sense because I was like, you sleep in, you live in a, in almost a shack and you have dirt floors and yet you are so joyful. I, I could not put that together. So I came back to Phoenix and the next, and I'll be honest with you, I started, I wandered off the path again of, of kind of that seeking mm -hmm. and, but I think it, it just stirred something in me. And so I ended up start, I started reading books all different religions, Buddhist, you know, or philosophies and, and, and religious beliefs, Buddhism, uh, I studied Islam on my own. I mean, I just read books. I started mm -hmm. reading philosophy and was really, really hungry. And I read Catholicism. Really, I didn't want to become Catholic. I didn't want to become Christian because I still had so many deep biases. Seated. Or, I did. Yeah. I saw Christians as these just, you know, people with pens all through, you know, I mean, they were like that. And <laughs> my dad had that, uh, but he was a convert. Yeah. That's a whole other story. So my granddad. And, but the thing is that I, but I, the more I read, the more I began to believe that Christianity was true. And there were two books that had a huge impact. I read Thomas Merton's Seven Story Mountain. Okay. The story of his conversion. Okay. And I remember I pretty much cried my way through the book. His oh, wow. talking about that longing. I mean, it's, it's like a modern day confessions in a sense, you okay. know, as far as, um, and then as far as it really reached my heart mm -hmm. and, and really helped me to see that longing had, had some sort of focus that there was, it was meant for something mm -hmm. and greater than anything I'd ever known. And then the second book was Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis and it converted my, my mind because I had such a struggle accepting the whole incarnation. Okay, I can believe there may be a God. Because mm -hmm. I'd always thought there had to be something. Right. But I started to believe, yeah, there could be a personal God that loved me. But this whole bit, he took on flesh. Because to me, it was like, that was absurd. It's like, why would he do that? I mean, it, to me, it was just like, why would you want to become human? You know? Yeah. And yeah. deal with the stuff that we humans deal with. But when I read Mere Christianity, I became convinced that it was too reasonable not to believe. And of course, there were other books. I was reading books on theology, uh, von Balthasar, um, the Carl Adams, Spirit of Catholicism, that were way over my head. <laughs> but there was truth in them that, like the little nuggets that I would grasp onto, and they lifted my heart and my mind. And so, so I, how old were you when when this that, was happening? About so I'm between 20s? 26 to 28. Okay. So I went into the RCIA process at 28 years old, and what happened was uh, I was at home by myself, and I was in the living room. And I've never heard this story. You haven't heard this one? I've not heard this story. So I, I'm excited. Well, this one, so it's a little embarrassing, but I... <laughs> I I'm going to get embarrassed I was now. so broken, and and I think what was happening was God was just, he was just banging on the door of my heart, and I was just like, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm holding the door shut. Yeah, and, I, and see, the other thing, too, by this time, I'm really looking at Christianity, at Protestantism. If I became a Protestant, maybe I could become a pastor. I mean, I was going through that. Deal. Yeah, yeah. I was really You were fire. trying to, yeah. Yeah. And See how it would fit with your life, because you know something's happening. But the more I read, I became convinced that Catholicism was founded by Jesus Christ. I became convinced, and so I basically talked myself out of becoming, you know, a Christian, a Protestant Christian, and I really found my way into the Catholic Church. Now, again, going back, I kind of got ahead of myself. Right before okay. that, yeah, I did. We did. <laughs> I, right before that, I well, there was one day, and I was so broken, I was on the threshold. I think, looking back, and I literally, I was by myself, and I got down on my knees, and I just said, "God, if you're real, save me." And if Jesus is real, save me. So I just prayed this. I don't know if it's an agnostic prayer of just willingness, you know, that like, I don't know if I can know you, but if I can, I want to. Mm -hmm. And I prayed it, and I'm crying, and I'm just blubbering like a child. I think I'm we on all have those moments yeah. at different times in our I life. I had one last God, week. No. please help me! Yeah, I've had a few of them. And uh, that's the remarkable thing, too, is that conversion has happened. I mean, repeatedly in the 24 years I've been. And so I, 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 and the thing that happened, again, I could not have articulated this way at the time, but I felt like this seed of hope. It was like something happened in me. And now looking back with some theological language, I felt like it was, it was uh, an encounter with the Blessed Trinity. It was, a, it was a, uh, an embrace of the Father. It was... What know, happened? Like, did something happen in that moment or... After you were, you know, it was done, just, <laughs> done. No, I just, it. as I prayed it, I'm, I'm literally on my face crying. And I literally felt like I was embraced. I wrote a, I wrote like an essay after it. And I haven't read it in a long time. But it talks about being held 
by something beyond anything I'd ever experienced. And so I didn't see anything, there were no visions, anything, but it was an embrace, I believe, of God. I believe that He embraced me in that moment. And, and then did you have peace? I had deep peace. Like it was, and, and that really it was hope. It was like I had hope that there was an answer to everything I was seeking. And it was right after that that I, I told, uh, I prayed, I started praying every day and I said, God, you know, I'm reading these books and I'm convinced I'm supposed to become Catholic, but I'm still like, what if I make the wrong choice? You know, what if I go against God's will? Because it happened really quickly and powerfully. But then I promised God that I was going to go up to church and pray. And I said, so you need to tell me if I'm supposed to become Catholic. And I guess I thought I was going to have a vision of Jesus or something. <laughs> or a sign that said, it was ridiculous. be Catholic. Yeah, and I thought that. So I go up to the church. And it's it so apologize. funny what we think about, you know, like we think how God's going to communicate with us. And then, it, you know. Yeah. Anyway, go on. We well, see too so, many movies, right? Yeah, exactly. And so, I, yeah, I thought, I mean, by this time I'm reading, you know, I'm reading the saints and I'm mm -hmm. reading, you know. And so I'm having these ideas of like God's going to do this dramatic thing. Well, he did do something dramatic, but it was, it was, uh, it was much more just regular, I mean, uh, just every day. But it was still powerful. So I go up to the church, and it was a holiday. It was a holiday weekend, and I go. What to church, church did you go to? How did you? So the church, church was called the, the Community of the Blessed Sacrament. Now I had started going. Okay. This is in the weeks after that prayer. Okay. And I started going on Sundays, and I just sit in the back. But there was something about the liturgy that was having an effect on me. Okay. I didn't take communion, of course, I didn't receive communion. But I would try to do everything. People would were kind and say, "Okay, we're, we kneel now." We, you know, people would. And so I ended up, I went up to that church in Scottsdale, Arizona, the community of the Blessed Sacrament. I go up to that church and I'm saying, Lord, help me to know if I'm supposed to become Catholic. And I go to open the door and it's locked. And oh my God! I'm a very dramatic person, as it's very <laughs> obvious anyway. And so I literally start walking around church, trying doors. That. Yeah, <laughs> trying doors. And I'm like, is this your answer? And I'm, I'm audibly doing this. Is this what you're trying to tell me? Is this what you're trying to say to me? You don't want me to become Catholic and I'm crying again, you know, it's ridiculous. Well, it's, I became like this crying mess, which is funny because uh, that for a few years I was so unhappy and so broken that I didn't cry. I mean, I had become very jaded and very, and all of a sudden stony now I'm like Mr. Stony yeah, heart, very stony heart. And I'm crying like a baby. So I walk around where there's a priest walking his dog and he says, he's kind of a gruff old priest, and he's like, he's, he's passed away since then. He's, hey, can I help you? And I was very intimidated, but I went over. We talked for three hours. Wow. And it just so happened the RCIA process, the inquiry process, was beginning that Wednesday. And he said, I'll tell you what. He goes, come to the RCIA, and he says, you're going to find your answers. So I did, and that started my journey. I don't think I missed one of them. And I came into the church at the Easter Vigil um, the following April. And, um, and that's, that's, that's how I came into the church. And I remember just um, the, the powerful experience of just letting go of those feelings of having to please my father. It was really hard, but it was so freeing. And then realizing that, um, you know, it was kind of like this transference thing, realizing that my father in heaven had a plan for me and I had to let go. Um, and my parents were both, over time, they were very supportive. And uh, they both said that it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And honestly, Bridget, over the course of my journey, there have been many times where, you know, I've wandered. I, I talk about, like, taking my little boy to the store to get milk. Um, I tell this to the young people that I'm like, my son, like, hey, buddy, we're just going to get milk. And he's like, Dad, look over here. Look over here. Oh, Dad, look over here. And I'm like, let's just go get the milk and go. And I, I feel like I'm that way with the Lord sometimes. I just, I get distracted by shiny things, you know. And he's <laughs> saying, come that. on, buddy. Come on. You know. <laughs> and, but that's been my, my story, and just like those deepening conversions and experiences of, of his love, and so. Well, gosh, that's a great story, and I, if you have a conversion story um, that you'd like to share with us, or you want to make a comment, um, maybe you've experienced something similar to what Leighton um, has experienced, then um, please leave a comment, and um, we'll do another segment. We're going to do another segment about his art and his youth ministry work, but... I think that's a wrap. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Lee. Thank you. All right. God bless.